making Stuart Model Steam Plant, Part 78. Various small jobs, but mainly painting. During the first steam test, I noticed that the safety valve was leaking. When the safety valve was blowing off, some water was coming from around the threads. Over the years, I've worked on many small boilers fitted with Stuart safety valves, and I've never seen any leaking from this particular area. But this is a brand new Stuart Models boiler. I applied some Loctite 542 to the threads, and here I'm tightening it up. And as you can see, the threads aren't a tight fit. When I fitted the heat insulation inside the side panels, you can see some of this at the edges of the side panel. As an extra precaution, I used high temperature paint for these side panels, so here I'm squirting some of this high temperature paint into the cap. And now, using a very small paintbrush, I'm applying some of this paint to the gap between the side panel and the front casting. I had to apply quite a lot of this paint to the gap, then I wiped off the surplus, and now it looks like this. It's chimney painting time. I'm going to paint it first using etching primer, so I need to rub it down. And for this I'm using a brand new piece of Scotch-Brite, not an old bit that's been laid on the bench for months. When Scotch-Brite is new, it cuts very well, and the more you use it, the blunter it gets and less efficient. I had to figure out a way of supporting the chimney while I painted it. Should I hang it from the ceiling? No, that would be a pain, because when I paint in the outer part of the workshop next to a wide open door, is actually on top of my brazing hearth. I put a piece of plywood on the brazing hearth so I don't contaminate the fire bricks with the paint. I found a really simple way to support the chimney. This is a milk carton, and it's a British milk carton, and thankfully the top of it is exactly the right diameter to fit the chimney. This milk carton was full of Hallett Oil's lubricating oil, and it was given to me by a man at Bancroft Mill when I visited there with my friend Alexander Carnes a few years ago. Here's the paint I'm going to use. It is self-etched grey primer, and I get it from a company called Auto Paint Northern. It's very good stuff. Let the painting commence. I use my normal painting method, rotating the part and applying several thin coats in quick succession. You don't need to apply a lot of etching primer, just enough to get a good coverage. As far as I'm aware, the etching primer has phosphoric acid in it, which is great for steel parts. The acid etches the surface of the steel, which makes the paint stick to the metal much better. These parts I'm working on are the boiler mounting brackets, and they are not made from steel. These are brass, so the acid isn't going to be very effective. I'm also going to paint the mounting for the pump. When it's all put together, this base should look like it's part of the pump. That's the general idea. I used some pieces of wood to pack up the parts as shown here. I didn't think it was a good idea to just sit the parts on the black paint on the base of the upturned tub that I used for painting on. Back in the outer part of the workshop now, and I'm spraying the parts with the etching primer. When you first spray this paint, it does look a bit orange peely, but as it dries, it seems to flatten off and look OK. Here is a gratuitous shot of the paint drying in the outer part of the workshop. Now it's time to paint the pump. I'm not using any primer because I don't need to. I've rubbed down the pump using Scotch-Brite, so it will be a good key for the paint. And this satin black paint from HMG Paints seems to stick to everything, including me. It seemed to me to be a bit of a waste of time removing the green paint, because that was very well stuck to the pump in the first place. Brush paint doesn't give quite as good a finish as spray paint, unless you're using HMG Paints Satin Black. Once this dries properly, it will look OK. Back now into the outer part of the workshop, it's time to use the same paint on the condenser, but this time I'm spraying it. A quick word about paint finishes. Recently, when I went to visit my daughter, I scraped my car on their garden wall. I can't complain, really. That's the only damage I've done to it in the five years that I've owned it. I booked my car into a professional car body shop. When the repair was completed, I stood back and looked at the car, and the finish is absolutely beautiful. It's just as good as the rest of the paintwork. The thing is, though, and I'm not making excuses, but I do not want the things that I paint in my workshop, which are usually steam engines and associated parts, to look like my car. This is not an excuse, and usually I do get quite a good finish. After painting the condenser, I masked off the top part of the water tank, and now I'm giving this a coat of paint. 
No primer, I just rub down the original paint which is very well stuck to the copper. So why don't I want to get the same finish as on my car? When I look at the full size engines, and bits and pieces in engine houses, the general standard of the paint job is nowhere near the finish on my car. Most full size steam engines and fittings are brush painted and very well indeed. I think it's known as coach painting and the skill of some of these hand painters is outstanding. When things get smaller, automatically the paint finish isn't quite as good, and I really do not like to see steam engines and parts painted to perfection. On the right hand side of this image is the condenser. On that the paint has dried, and that's what it's going to look like. The paint on the water tank at the other side is still a bit wet, and the paint on the bits and pieces at the front of the image is very wet indeed. And if you look closely at this image, the brush painted pump is looking good. Quite a good finish on that too. Time for me to go and I will leave you with this shot of the paint drying. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.